composition of compounds. So the chemical formula is going to give us um, relative quantities of each element in a compound. So we can look at something called a mass percent composition or a mass percent of a particular element in a compound. And it's helpful to remember the general formula for a percentage. Percent in general is the part divided by the whole times 100. So whatever part you're interested in divided by the whole thing times 100. So, you know, when my oldest son went to kindergarten, there were five girls and 15 boys. Right? Wow. So what percent were boys? Well, that's the part. So percent of boys would be 15 boys, and the whole is going to be the total number of children in the classroom, which was 20 times 100. So that's going to end up being 75%. Now, sometimes you'll see this written times 100%. There we're treating percent as a unit. I've learned with my 3A classes um, that they do funny things when we do that. So I'm going to avoid that. Um, when you multiply by 100 on your calculator, it's just 100. Do not do 100 and then press the percent button. I don't think mine even has a percent button. Oh, it does. Look at that. I didn't even know it had one. That's what they were doing. They were taking their fraction and multiplying by 100%. Well, the percent button there is for finding, like, you know, this dress is 30% off. The price times 30%. It's for people who don't understand percentages is really what it is. So when you're multiplying by 100, it's 100. The decimal point should move over two places. So what is a mass percent? We're just finding the, the percent of each element in the compound. And we can use two different sources of information for this. If we know the formula for the compound, we can calculate it from the formula. Or if we have experimental mass analysis of the compound, we can calculate it from that data. The percentages ideally should add up to 100, but it may not come out perfectly because of measurement errors or rounding errors. So the mass percent of element X will be the mass of element X in one mole of the compound divided by the mass of one mole of the whole compound times 100 to make it a percentage. Well, how do we find the mass of one mole of the compound? Well, if we know the formula, we calculate the molar mass. And then we're going to look at what mass of that element is in one mole of the compound. We'll do an example. Acetic acid is the active ingredient in vinegar. Calculate the mass percent composition of oxygen in acetic acid. So mass percent, so the percent oxygen is going to equal the grams of oxygen divided by the grams of the whole thing. It's the part over the whole, C2H4O2 times 100. They didn't give us any masses. So we just choose one mole. And we're going to find the mass of one mole of acetic acid. So one mole of acetic acid has two moles of carbon. And four moles of hydrogen. And two moles of oxygen. So my calculator is showing me 60.052 grams.
That's the mass of one mole of acetic acid. So I can put that in for the denominator. Again, I'm not going to round it yet. I'm just going to keep track. What's the mass of oxygen in one mole of this compound? It'll be 32. It's this part right here. You kind of already did the work. One mole of this has two oxygen, two moles of oxygen. So here's the oxygen, and so 32 grams. Sometimes students forget to notice that there's two oxygens, and they'll just put 16 up there. That's a common mistake. But in one unit of this, there's two oxygens, and so we have to take the molar mass of oxygen and multiply it by two. So we got 32 up here. And 32 divided by 60.052 times 100 equals... 53, I'm going to round this to 29%. Rounding it to four significant figures because the molar masses I used had four sig figs. That's a reasonable percent. If you get 0.005% or something, you did something wrong. Or if you get over 100. Because it's really not possible to have more than 100%, right? What would it mean if 150% of the children in the kindergarten classroom were boys? There'd be more boys than there are children. Is that possible? No, not possible. Any questions? Mass percent makes a great conversion factor between the mass of the element and the mass of the compound. So here, important to remember that percent means per hundred. Literally, per cent. How many cents in a dollar? A hundred, right? So this is per hundred. So when we see 69.58% chlorine by mass, that's 69.58 grams of chlorine per hundred. Per hundred grams of the whole thing per 100 grams of this formula. So if we had, um, you know, 5 kilograms of Freon 112 and we wanted to know the mass of chlorine that was in that, we could use the percent mass to calculate that. Let's do an example. What mass in grams of iron 3 oxide contains 58.7 grams of iron? And we're told that iron 3 oxide is 69.94% iron by mass. Well, let's take that percentage and write it as a conversion factor. 69.94% iron. So grams of iron per how many grams of the whole thing? 100. And that 100, because this is a percent, that 100 is an exact number. This number is not exact. The 100 in 100 percent is exact. Well, we could write the formula here. Do we even have to know the formula, though, to do this problem? We don't. We don't need to know it because the percent is all we need. So I'm just going to be lazy and write the um, three. I'm going to write the name. So we want to know um, the, the mass of iron oxide, and we're given the mass of iron. So 58.7 grams of iron. We want grams of, of the iron oxide. I really don't want to write that out. And so we need to divide by grams of iron down here. The numbers that we put in this conversion factor come from the percentage. 
So 69.94 grams of iron, that goes in the bottom. And 100 goes on the top. If you're good with percentages, you can probably do a problem like this without even really thinking about it. But I'm talking to those who are not good with percentages. So 58.7 times 100 divided by 69.94. And how many significant figures would this have? Three. Our starting mass, 58.7, is three sig figs. So 83.9 grams. Is that a physically reasonable number? Could 83.9 grams of the compound contain 58 grams of one of the parts? Yeah. If this number comes out smaller than that, something went wrong. Any questions? Uh, chemical formulas also work as conversion factors. They give us the relationship between numbers of particles, numbers of atoms or dozens of atoms or moles of atoms. So this formula here, C2, Cl4, F2, there's multiple conversion factors possible, but these are two of the possibilities. We can say there's two moles of carbon for every one mole of the compound. This two comes directly from the subscript. In one unit of this compound, there's two carbons. There are floor, floor, there are fluorines. No, there's four chlorines, Cl4. So we can say four moles of chlorine per one mole of compound. The formula gives relationships between particles, atoms, and molecules not mass. Determine the mass of oxygen in a 7.2 gram sample of aluminum sulfate. There's more than one way to solve this problem. The title of this example is chemical formulas as conversion factors, so we're going to choose that method. So we have We have 7.2 grams of oxygen, no, 7.2 grams of aluminum sulfate, and we want to find the mass of oxygen. Um, we need the formula for aluminum sulfate. What kind of a compound is aluminum sulfate? What kind of an element is aluminum? It's an ionic compound because aluminum is a metal. What charge does aluminum have as an ion? Three plus. And what's the formula for sulfate? SO4, two minus. So to put these two together, we're going to need two aluminums and three sulfates. So we have 7.2 grams of aluminum sulfate, and we're trying to figure out how many grams of oxygen is in there. Well, can we go directly from grams, as I wrote, of the compound to grams of the oxygen? No. No, we can't. We're supposed to use the formula because I'm demonstrating that method we have how many, how many oxygen atoms in here? Three times four. There's 12 oxygen atoms in one of these units. So does that mean there's 12 grams of oxygen in one gram of, no. Because this is relating numbers of particles. So I can't do that. I can't go directly. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to find how many moles of the compound do I have? And I can do that using the molar mass. And then uh, this is going to have to bend around. From that, I can find 
the moles of oxygen, because I know there's 12 moles of oxygen in one mole of this. And then from moles, I can go to grams of oxygen. That percentage is looking like a faster method, right? The problem is you have to calculate the percentage. And so you end up basically doing as many steps to calculate the percentage as you do to do it this way instead. Seven point two grams of aluminum sulfate. In problems like these, as we'll see in much of the rest of the semester, it's important to say grams of what? Because if if you get them mixed up because you're not labeling them, uh, your answer will come out wrong. And so we're starting with the grams of compound. So we write grams of compound, even though it's long and tedious. And then we're going to have a conversion factor here where we're going to have moles of aluminum sulfate. This is just not, not going to fit. We'll start curving now per gram of aluminum sulfate. And then we're going to go moles of oxygen and divide by moles of aluminum sulfate. Okay, I need to make my pen a little thinner, maybe. That's not much thinner. And then we can go to grams of oxygen. If you're doing this on a piece of paper and you write big, sometimes it's helpful to turn it landscape so you've got more space. Such a mess. Um, so we need to come up with three different uh, conversion factors here. And it doesn't matter which order we come up with them. I'm going to do the last one first because that one's the easiest to me. That 16.00 grams is one mole of oxygen. And this one in the middle, how many moles of oxygen for how many moles of aluminum sulfate? Well, it's not one to one. Twelve to one. I just misheard. Twelve to one. So one mole of this has 12 moles of oxygen. That's where we're using the chemical formula as a conversion factor. And then up here, we need the molar mass, don't we? 310. 310, thank you. That'll save us a whole bunch of... 310 point what? Awesome, thank you. Anybody disagree with that? Not sure yet? I'll have some tea. Three forty two. Three forty two point what? One five eight. Okay, so we've got one who says three ten and we've got two that say three forty two, so we're going with best two out of three. Sorry. It happens. It happens so easily. Okay, now I'm gonna do this and I want at least one of you to do this so that we can get the right answer. Seven point two divided by 342.158 times 12 times 16. Uh, 4.04. You got that? Awesome. 4.04 grams of oxygen. Yes. Yes, it is. Thank you. I was focused on all of the um, molar masses, but we started with two, didn't we? So I, I can fix that. Come on. I think I can fix it. There we go. 4.0. And then always ask yourself, is that reasonable? Well, we start with the whole thing is 7.2 grams. Four is less than that, so that's, that's pretty good. And if we look at this formula, we see that most of the atoms are oxygen. So the fact that it's taking up, you know, a little more than half 
seems seems reasonable. Any questions? 